Hello! Well, this is a short video showing a little side project I've been working on as part of fixing and rebuilding my laser cutter. But sadly, there is some mixed news in this. While I still probably got a reasonable deal getting this second-hand 4060 laser for £500, it turns out I've been had in regards to its power output. It was sold to me as a 100 watt laser cutter, but after a closer look at the power supply, I noticed it was marked for 60 watts. I got worried and took a closer look at the tube, and I couldn't find any labels anywhere saying its power level. I had inspected the tube before, but it was only to look for water leaks or any signs of damage or arcing. So I then measured the tube size and compared it to other tube dimensions online and discovered I had in fact got a 60 watt tube as well. To put it mildly, this is a massive disappointment. And if I'd known at the time, I may not have been so quick to snap up this deal. The trouble is, I've already spent around £100 doing it up, and the cost of returning it makes the idea of sending it back vomit inducing. So I've had to just accept the fact I've been tricked and carry on. The original buyer claimed that he paid for a 100 watt upgrade when he bought the machine, so maybe they were conned by the original sale, who knows. I've tried contacting the person, I bought it off and have so far not had any reply. So for now, I'll be kind and give them the benefit of the doubt as it is clear at the time I was repairing this thing that the person I got it off probably was out of their depth and maybe wouldn't have realised they were con themselves. And in fact it was only by chance that I noticed the PSU rating which led me to investigate the tube. Anyway, at this stage I had pretty much completed repairing this thing. I had replaced the burnt out motors, swapped out belt pulleys, sorted out fume extraction, air assist and rewired some of the parts. All that's left to do was to sort out the mount for the control panel and tidy up the rat's nest of wires I've left on the inside. For this video I'm focusing on making the control panel mount. Right away I knew what I needed to do and how I was going to go about it. I was going to use photogrammetry assistance to help me build and design my mount. I've been wanting to try out this technique for a while and it was the perfect use case for it. For those that don't know, photogrammetry is a way of creating reasonably high detailed and accurate 3D models of real world objects by analysing lots of photos and extrapolating features to build a detailed point cloud out of it. A 3D mesh can then be made from this point cloud and placed within a variety of 3D modelling programmes. So what I first needed to do was prep my scan area so the photo scanning software can see the shape of the laser chassis, the very thing I wanted to place my mount into. The trouble is, this paintwork is rather shiny and reflects light, so this would normally be a really bad surface to capture 3D data off. I had to scribble markings all over the area like a 5 year old with ADHD who had just discovered their first marker pen. This meant there would be a decent amount of high contrast details that the software can see to build a point cloud off. I then placed printouts of special marker points that I could later use to scale my mesh correctly in the 3D software. I then took tons of photos of various different angles and panning the area, focusing on the area I needed to scan. With photo scanning, the more the better really is the rule. I then imported the sequence of photos into the software and let it do its thing. Even on my first gen Ryzen machine with 16 threads, this still took quite a while. The software firstly takes a basic feature match process to get the correct positions of each angle of the photo, and this only takes a couple of minutes. The next process is to then create a dense point cloud. It finds more matching features and using the multiple photo locations, it's able to extrapolate the depth of each contrasting point. This is where more photos are better really comes in. As with each photo that that feature can be seen in, it makes the calculation of that 3D point all the more accurate. While the computer was doing its thing, I went to clean off the marker ink. I knew that IPA usually removes Sharpie markers pretty easily, but as luck would have it, it didn't. The Sharpies left a pretty decent stain on the laser cutter paintwork. So I then had to go at it with something a little bit tougher, acetone. The trouble is I knew acetone strips paint, so I had to be super careful and wipe the stains off pretty quickly, and I managed to remove the stains without stripping any paint. By around an hour or so later, the dense point cloud was completed, and it was time to build a mesh from this. Again, I set some basic options and let the software do its thing and what I got out of the software was reasonable. Not perfect, far from it in fact. The resulting mesh came out a bit lumpy and didn't resolve the hole in the chassis properly. To fix this, 
I could have gone up and marked the scan area again with even more finer details and then take even more photos giving extra light into the internals behind the hole so I could detect more depth detail. But while not perfect I actually had the information I needed so I then imported this mesh into Fusion 360 and discovered right away that there was a scaling issue. For some reason the photo scanning software had this mesh down at a third of the correct scale so I then scaled it up, double checked some real world measurements so to make sure it was right, then modelled out a block reference of the scanned data. From there I modelled a panel mount and quickly went to print it on my rod core got railed. Which as you can guess if you watch my other videos, failed me once again. With it being Black Friday and Cyber Monday time of year, I bit the bullet and with some recommendations I ordered the Artillery Sidewinder X1 to be my new daily driver printer while I tried to fix my main one. And I ended up waiting 3 weeks for Gearbest to finally dispatch my printer. When I finally got the printer I quickly put it together, found some rather old PLA that I wanted to use up and got on with the print. And after 2 failed prints I then pulled out some newer PLA and finally got a finished print out of it. This is actually a pretty decent printer, it's sturdy and with some nice features, but certainly needs some improvements. I did notice some strange set artefacts so I will likely look at upgrading the old uncoupler setup that this printer has, as it has a little bit of Z play in it. I then took the print and did a quick and dirty clean up. Filled and sanded most of the print being sure to get the worst of the layer lines, but I wasn't too worried about the print quality as I had a secret weapon. To try and match the paint on my printer I got myself some hammerite white paint. This is meant to give a stippled hammered effect, but sadly after applying two liberal coats it just ended up looking like normal thick gloss paint, and it also didn't hide all the layer lines. Oh well. I then wired in two new mains voltage buttons to replace the dangerous old buttons that were arcing internally when pressed. These buttons lift to drop the table via a mains powered motor. With them in place and safely sealed with heat shrink, I then wired in the master power switch, used some rubber tape to make a good press fit to help secure my mount into the chassis, I then fitted the control panel and switched it on. And, well, and it worked. I now have a nice panel mount for my controller, and while my paint isn't perfect, it blends pretty well enough and does a decent functional job. All that's left to do now is to tidy up the wiring and the building of this laser is complete. Even with the disappointment of discovering I may have been conned in regards to its power output, I do still have a now working laser cutter with a reasonably large work area for a fairly reasonable price. But I can't deny that the deal that I thought that I had just isn't there anymore and the truth is I am actually now in some real financial trouble because of it. I bought this machine because I needed one for a future project, but also because I had just made a deal to sell something. Sadly that sale has just fallen through and the money I was going to make from that sale was going to be used to offset the cost of this laser cutter. And the truth is my projects are not cheap to make. I am unemployed and while there is some hope on the horizon in regards to me finding a good full time job, I'm not there yet and I am in fact struggling. Which is why I have set up a GoFundMe to help me carry on doing these builds and to help support my channel. If you want to help support me in the channel and in turn help fund these builds, please find the link in the description and consider making a small pledge. Life has not been easy for the last decade and while a fair amount of it is my own doing, I have actually really struggled. These builds help me keep focused on the positive things in life and they give me an ounce of self worth and I enjoy showing my builds to people and hope you will get something out of it. I have not properly started the Stargate project yet but I do plan to start on it and then focus on it in the new year. I'm also putting some time into building a new higher quality tricorder so expect some news regarding that in the future as well. Thank you again everyone for watching this video, if you haven't already please consider subscribing to follow my future videos and updates. And I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year without too much of a hangover. Thank you and goodbye.